Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel Sai and You Pharma. Today we are going to discuss gastro retentive drug delivery systems, and it is Unit Three of M Pharm First Sem Drug Delivery Systems subject. So the syllabus of this unit is: we have to discuss principles, concepts, advantages and disadvantages, and modulation of GI transit time approaches to extend GI transit. So first of all, we will discuss. what are these gastro retentive drug delivery systems so they are basically designed to prolong the retention time of a dosage form in the stomach so by increasing the retention time the bioavailability will be increased and the therapeutic efficacy of the drugs will also be enhanced with an absorption window primarily in the stomach or upper part of the small intestine and they are basically useful for drugs which are poorly soluble or which are unstable in the intestinal or colonic environment or for drugs that have a very narrow absorption window in the upper gastrointestinal tract so before going ahead we will just discuss schematic view on the anatomy of stomach stomach is basically divided into two parts first is this proximal stomach and second part is distal stomach and proximal stomach includes this portion which is cardia fundus and body this is body and the lower portion which is distal stomach it includes pyloric sphincter and rum here you can see the fundus and body they primarily act as reservoirs for undigested food and this is antrum and it acts as a pump to assist in gastric emptying by a propelling action now we will see what is migrating myoelectric complex it it is also called as mmc it is a cyclic pattern of electrical and mechanical activity which occurs in the stomach and small intestine during fasting and the main function of mmc is clearing the digestive tract it clears the stomach and small intestine of undigested food secretions cells and propels them to the colon second is maintaining bile salt circulation it helps to maintain the electrohepatic circulation of bile salts so these are important phases of migrating myoelectric complex though here we have written four phases but it basically they have three phases phase 1 is quiescent period with rare contractions and the duration is 30 to 60 minutes phase 2 is intermittent action potentials and contraction that gradually increases in intensity and frequency as the phase progresses and this is for 20 to 40 minutes phase 3 is short periods of intense large regular contractions this phase is termed as housekeeper wave because it enables all undigested materials to be swept out of the stomach and down to the small intestine and the duration is 10 to 20 minutes there is one more phase which is phase 4 or it is called transition phase it occurs between phase 3 and phase 1 of two consecutive cycles in a brief transitional phase it is of duration 0 to 5 minutes so this is very important to know about migrating myoelectric complex it works efficiently in fasting state now what is the pattern of gastric emptying gastric emptying occurs in both fed and fasted state but the pattern of gastric emptying varies in all in both these states first in the fasted state an interdigestive sequence of electrical events follows in a cyclic manner through both the stomach and small intestine every 90 to 120 minutes but during the interdigestive phases the diameter of the pylorus increases up to approximately 19 mm and as a result the particles which are smaller than the diameter of pyloric sphincter can easily evacuate from the pylorus to the duodenum during the interdigestive phase then comes fed state when we have taken food the motor activity is generated 5 to 10 minutes after ingestion of a meal and continues as long as food remains in the stomach and 
it can delay the gastric emptying rate. Now we will see what are the key concepts. First is prolonged gastric retention. So the important feature is that we have to extend the time a drug remains in the stomach and these drug delivery systems gastro retentive drug delivery systems can enhance drug absorption and improve viability by prolonging this gastric retention second is controlled drug release they provide a sustained release of the drug ensuring a consistent therapeutic effect and reducing dosing frequency third is targeted delivery it ensures that drugs are released at the desired site within the gastrointestinal tract which can be particularly beneficial for the localized treat. Now comes key principles of gastrointestinal systems. The key principles are buoyancy or floating systems and mucoadhesion, swelling or expandable systems, high density systems and magnetic systems. And on these principles only further we will be seeing various types of gastrointestinal systems. First principle is buoyancy or floating system. Here the mechanism is that these systems are designed such a way that they float on gastric fluids due to their lower density compared to the fluids. Here we can see the system it has drug plus polymer plus effervescent agent and when it goes here in the fluid then it floats because of the polymers which help in buoyancy. They include low density polymers or effervescent agents that generate gas to keep the dosage from buoyant. They are of two types, non-effervescent floating systems and effervescent floating systems. And the examples are like floating tablets, capsules and beads. Here we will see in detail what are non-effervescent floating systems and what are effervescent. Basically in non-effervescent, highly swellable cellulose derivatives or gel forming polymers are used. And the non-effervescent systems include hydrodynamically balanced system and single and double layer floating tablets and micro balloons and hollow microspheres. In effervescent, as the name suggests, it includes a gas generating agent and volatile liquids and this approach has been applied for single and multiple unit systems and in this the important effervescent agents used are like sodium bicarbonate, calcium carbonate, tartaric acid and citric acid. They are used in combination with hydrophilic polymers. Next comes muco addition. These systems adhere to the gastric mucosa thus resisting the natural clearance process of the stomach. Here you can see drug plus mucoadhesive polymer and it goes and sticks to the mucosa. We use bioadhesive polymers in its, in its design that can form hydrogen bonds, electrostatic interactions or van der Waal forces with the mucosal surface. So they stick to the surface so the clearance is avoided. And the example of polymers used are carbopol, chitosin, sodium alginate, HPMC, HPMC, polyethylene glycol or polyacrylic acid. And example of systems are tablet and patches coated with mucoadhesive materials, beads, microspheres, films and capsules are used for preparing these type of systems. Next is expandable systems or swelling systems. They are also called plug type system because they block the pyloric sphincter uh, like a plug and the mechanism is that these systems swell in the presence of gastric fluid increasing their size to a point where they cannot pass through the pylorus. Here you can see drug plus swellable polymer when it goes in the fluid it comes in contact with the fluid and it expands. Incorporation of super disintegrants or hydrophilic polymers are used that swell significantly. They are, they are of two types. One is swelling and second is unfolding. Example is swellable tablets and hydrogels. Next comes high density systems. As the name suggests, it will be having drug plus high density excipient. These systems are formulated to have a higher density than gastric fluids ensuring that they remain in the stomach by gravitational force. So in this 
the materials used are which have high specific gravity like medium sulfate, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Example includes high density tablets and pellets. Next principle is of magnetic systems. The systems use an external magnetic field to hold the dosage form at a specific location in the stomach. Here you can see the drug plus internal magnet plus polymer is used and they will be going here and the external magnet is also present which will help to hold it in the surface of the stomach. So incorporation of magnetic materials into the drug formulation is used and tablets or capsules containing magnetic particles are the examples. What are the important advantages of these type of systems? Because of the enhanced absorption of drugs that are primarily absorbed in the stomach or upper small intestine, the bioavailability is improved. Second is they provide a sustained and controlled release of the drug over a prolonged period leading to better therapeutic outcomes. Third is reduced dosage frequency and because of this the patient compliance is enhanced or improved. Next is minimized side effect. Better localization of the drug action in the stomach can reduce systemic side effects which can be beneficial for conditions like peptic ulcers. Then they avoid dose dumping of medicines, they improve therapeutic efficacy of the drugs which have short half-life, then site specific delivery of the medications is achieved and enhanced residence time of drugs at the absorption site is achieved. Now what are the important challenges or limitations or the important considerations that we have to take care of while preparing these systems. First is physiological variability. As we know that the body of each and every person is different and there is difference in gastric motility, pH, gastric emptying rate among the individuals and they can affect the performance of these type of systems. Then patient related factors, they include food intake, posture, gastric pH, fed or fasted state and the presence of certain diseases which can influence the retention and effectiveness of these systems. Third is design complexity. Developing an optimal system requires careful consideration of drug properties, delivery system design and patient specific factors. And next is formulation stability. We have to ensure the stability of the dosage form in the harsh gastric environment. So these are the considerations that we have to take care of while preparing these systems. Now what are the important applications? So they are suitable for those drugs which are absorbed from the stomach. Example, albuterol. Then labile at alkaline pH. Example, ranitidine and metformin. Then poorly soluble at alkaline pH. Example, furosemide and diazepam. Having a narrow window of absorption. Example, riboflavin and levodopa. Antibiotics, example amoxicillin, amoxicillin for helicobacter pylori infection, then antacids, example aluminum hydroxide, antidiabetic drugs, example metformin, and drugs for treating peptic ulcers like sucralfate. These are so suitable for uh, these are uh, the important applications related to these systems. So, thank you so much. Stay connected with Sciedu Pharma. This was the part one. In next part, we will be discussing critical factors affecting GRDDS efficacy, then types of gastrointestinal systems and marketed products and evaluation parameters of these systems. Hope you have subscribed our channel. Do write in the comment section how you are liking our videos and go to the playlist and watch other videos uploaded related to MPharm notes of pharmaceutical subjects.